How many people in the room, by show of hands, have had distinct plans about wanting to do something, and then something happening where they couldn't do that, and yet whatever happened as a result of that event or whatever, it turned out better. Almost everybody. My entire life has been like that. I had plans. My dad was a national park ranger. And so my plan and my career thoughts were that I would be a national park ranger as well. It's a great life. You travel around the different national parks. You have wonderful, meaningful conversations with bears and coyotes and mountain lions and all that sort of thing. It's a great life. So when I started school, I started in Texas A&M. And I hit that again. <laughs> and I majored in wildlife management. Now, for those of you who are from the University of Texas, I want to clarify that the wildlife management at Texas A&M is distinctly different from the wildlife management at the University of Texas. <laughs> at any rate, I started at A&M, I caught the Asiatic flu, I dropped out, and there were my plans, at least for a while, of becoming a national park ranger. Now, what do young men do when they're on the street, don't have anything to do, and they don't want to deal drugs or shoot people or that sort of thing? They join the army. <laughs> so that's what I did. When I joined the army, a whole bunch of sergeants shouted at me, screamed at me, hollered at me, did all kinds of horrible things, and I thought, after two days, that they were kings. And so my entire Life changed. I wanted to be a sergeant. I thought that would be great. Well, ultimately I became a sergeant and realized that they really aren't the kings that they have to be. <laughs> so I started looking around and somebody suggested that I go to the officer candidate school and become an officer. How hard is that? Well, actually it was pretty hard, but I did that. And when I graduated, I became a second lieutenant of infantry. Those of you who have been in the military know that a second lieutenant is even lower than a sergeant. <laughs> yes. So I started my military career in that mode. I had several different, very, very great experiences. I became an army ranger. I jumped out of airplanes for fun. I was a at the Jungle Warfare Training Center in Panama. I was having a great time. Vietnam started. I thought, ha, there is a place in which I can put my talents to use. Now, those of you who've been in the military know that from time to time, the military will give you a form. And it's called a wish sheet. <laughs> and you fill this out, and you tell the military personnel and detailer, where you want to go and what you want to do. And that way, they can fit their, your career into wherever you want to go and you'll do a better job. So I put Fort Lewis, Washington, which was a great outdoors post, next to Mount Rainier, it's great backpacking, hiking, hunting, fishing, all of that kind of stuff. Or Fort Carson, Colorado, which is very similar, you know, the Rockies. So I put that in there. I got Fort Hood, Texas. <laughs> when the time came for me to volunteer for Vietnam, they said, oh, that's good. And they gave me Fort, they gave me Vietnam. So I went and spent the time in Vietnam. And I came back and they said, okay, now's the time, you know, I want to go to Carson or Fort, to uh, Fort Lewis. They said, great, you're going to Fort Bliss, Texas. <laughs> so I went to Fort Bliss, Texas. And in so doing, while I was there, they said, oh, you need a degree. I did not have a degree at the time, I had dropped out of A&M. So I attended the University of Texas at El Paso for two years. And I parlayed my bachelor's degree into a master's degree at the same time. I just forgot to tell them that I'd gotten a bachelor's early. And they said, fine. And we're going to reward you now and send you back to Vietnam. <laughs> so I went to Vietnam. I said, okay, I'm coming back. Fort Lewis, Fort Carson. Fine, we're going to 
send you to the command of the general staff college at fourth level. <laughs> that's even better, because that's a step up in the military education system, and will help you get promoted. When I finished that, I said there was an opening in the Canadian staff college, and I wanted to get overseas to some place that spoke English. So I said, I'd like to be an instructor at the Canadian staff college. And they said, well, OK. Great, we're going to give you part of that. We're going to make you an instructor at Fort Benning, Georgia. <laughs> so Fort Benning, Georgia, I got some platform time, three years of instruction time. I also got an opportunity to go to the Middle East for six months and tell the Saudis that they needed to modernize their forces. This was shortly after the uh, 73 war. And I came back and the Army said, we'd like you to be a foreign area officer, which is a secondary program to being an infantryman. And they said, you can choose whatever country you want, and we will send you, since you already have an advanced degree, we will send you to school to learn the language of your choice. I said, Greece, I'm an historian. I said, Greece is a wonderful place. It's got all these white buildings and all this history. And I said, I want to go to Greece. And they said, Greece, good. Well, we can give you part of that. <laughs> Turkey is also historical, <laughs> as is Iran. So, I went to Iran. I learned Farsi and Dari, we just spoke in Afghanistan. I went to Iran, and when I was coming back, I said, Carson Lewis. They said, Fort Riley, Kansas. <laughs> so I went to Fort Riley, and in so doing, all of these places, by the way, that I had been sent to gave me something that I probably would not have received if I had gone to the place that I had wanted to and planned for. At Fort Riley, it was a great family post. I was into the uh, higher headquarters. I managed to command a brigade of 4,000 men. And at that point, met and was mentored by two future, future chiefs of staff of the Army and one chairman of Joint Chiefs. I had an opportunity from there to go to the United Nations in the Middle East. I was on the general's track, and they said, Bob, don't take the UN job in the Middle East, because you'll get out of the track mainstream of becoming a general officer. Becoming a general officer moves you from Europe to Korea to the United States, to Europe, Korea, and the United States. And so at that point in time, I figured, oh, who wants to do that? So I became, went to the Middle East. Every time I had asked for something, I had been given something else. And I finally came to the realization that that's really what I was going to let my wife, my life, do. <laughs> did you hear that? <laughs> so, at any rate, after I got out of the service, I went off and did some strange things in various places in, in the world and came back. And I was running a company general manager of a company between Halliburton and, and uh, KBR. And they decided that they would disestablish my company because they were <coughs> ready to spin off. So I found myself on the street without a job. I started publishing companies, started writing books. And I was very upset because I had lost this wonderful job. And three months after I had lost the job, my wife, Peggy, had a stroke. And if I had not been home, and get her to the hospital in 20 minutes, she would have died without me. So the point being is it was good that I was fired yeah. because the light of my life, my business partner tells me how to dress, all that sort of thing, <laughs> is still with us. My main point here is I've lived a very full and interesting life, but it was not until I finally gave up and said, Okay, it's, it's time to let somebody else, or fate, or kismet, karma, whatever you want to call it, take charge. And so I would say to you that if you have plans, don't become fixated on them. Be flexible, because the opportunities that you have may be better than what you plan for yourself. I'd like you all to write this quote down, because I'm very proud of it. The pathway to success lies between the gates of unexpected opportunities. And you'll see that at some point in time, in some dictionary, right up there with 
George B. Patton's comments. And so you should remember that. Say it again. The pathway to success lies between the gates of unexpected opportunities. Thank you very much. He's also a best-selling author, he's a speaker, and he speaks to groups all over the place. If you know of a group that wants to hear this story, please come up to Bob with the Younger Business Crush and give you a call. Thank you again, Bob. We really appreciate all your work. Thank you.